Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our second Boston Marathon Jimmy Fun Walk presented by Hyundai uh, Virtual Town Hall. It's great to have you here. Thank you for joining us on Friday morning. Hope you've got your, your coffee ready and ready to settle in for you know 40 to 45 minutes of um, some good conversation regarding the walk and also to hear a little bit more about what uh, is happening here currently at Dana-Farber. So again, I want to thank you. I want to make sure, you know, certainly before we start, uh, be very remiss to not recognize the events of this week and and over the past few weeks. And it's certainly been a very tough time, you know, around this nation, around the world. And uh, you know, one of the things that we continue to try to do is to to not be overwhelmed. It can be very overwhelming to look around. And if we can remain connected with each other <clears throat> and really try to help make the world a better place through our community and the community around us. And I think that's one thing that the Jimmy Fun Walk community is really good at doing year over year over year. Um, we are a strong and diverse group of supporters um, that have been there to support Dana-Farber's patients, doctors, nurses, researchers, families, and all of you. And just on behalf of Dana-Farber, I wanna make sure before we get started that I thank you for being part of this just wonderful community and continue to work together um, wherever we are to build a stronger community. Um, so thank you for all you do today and, and yesterday and into the future. So I uh, just know we are certainly all stronger together and hope to continue that spirit over the next, you know, few, certainly few weeks, months, years to come. So um, some quick housekeeping before we get started, please bear with us. If there are any technical glitches, we're still learning how to do these things. This is only our second one. So um, if you have any questions, please use the Q and A. Um, functionality at the bottom of your screen. Um, all of you due to the size of this uh, webinar are currently on mute and your cameras are disabled. So please simply use the Q&A function. Uh, this town hall is gonna be recorded. Uh, we'll be shared in an email on Monday that you can share either with other walkers, friends, colleagues, whomever. Um, so please know you'll get that link. And I know many of you obviously are, are here today to learn a little bit more about what the Jimmy Fund Walk Your Way, as we announced earlier this week, um, is all about. So we're gonna focus on that for sure towards the uh, middle and end of this meeting. But before we do that, I'm very excited to introduce our special guest speaker today. Uh, Ann Gross is the Senior Vice President of Patient Care Services and the Chief Nursing Officer at Dana-Farber. Ann is also a walker. She walks on the DFCI team, Nursing and Patient Care Services. Um, Ann, thanks so much for joining us today. I know how busy you are. Um, you've been able to carve out some time for us this morning. We really, really appreciate it. Um, just hoping to be able to provide some insight to us on the front lines um, and, and how Dana-Farber is working to keep all of our patients safe. So again, thank you so much and uh, take it away. Good morning, everyone. And Zach, thank you uh, for that kind introduction. It's, uh, it's a pleasure, uh, really, to be here with you this morning. And I, uh, on behalf of the Institute, thank you all uh, for your commitment to uh, our, what we're about, our mission um, of healing, providing healing and hope for our patients and families with cancer. Um, <clears throat> as Zach said, I, uh, I am a walker. I, I've worked at Dana-Farber since 2002 and have participated in probably every fundraising event there is, but I'm a uh, relatively new walker, uh, having joined uh, or formed a team in our department uh, several years ago and uh, just love the event. It's one of my favorite things to look forward to in the fall uh, each year. Um, and of course, uh, I can't help but uh, acknowledge that the walk will be different this year. As you know, um, it, these decisions uh, are so hard for us uh, because you know something like the walk is just such a fantastic time to all come together uh, and united and sort of in defiance of cancer and trying to do all we can to beat it. Um, and yet, of course, we also know this was the right decision, the only decision to, to go virtual this year. And, um, uh, and so, you know, I'm looking forward with uh, my team and I hope you all are with all of your teams to sort of figuring out creative ways to to do a virtual walk this year with the same passion and commitment that, that we all have. Um, 
It's been an interesting time uh, here at, at Dana-Farber these last several months. And uh, I thought I would just describe a little bit about uh, the process of what we have uh, been doing uh, since the beginning of the pandemic and, and then end with uh, uh, where we are now and what we, what we see in the future. Um, as you know, and as all of you have experienced yourselves, um, in early March, we had to very, very rapidly uh, scale back our uh, services, not our services, but our way we were delivering cancer services to our patients and families and focus on how could we continue to provide the the vital cancer care that we provide every day at Dana-Farber while uh, managing the uh, real uh, risk of, uh, of COVID-19. Um, as you uh, also probably know, uh, our patients are some of the most vulnerable patients, and so uh, their risk for COVID-19 and an adverse outcomes with that uh, um, disease is uh, have, have been particularly heightened. So we uh, really just all efforts were, were put to bear on um, providing an environment that would continue to, that would allow us to continue to treat patients who needed uh, to their treatment. Uh, it's clear, obviously, that although uh, uh, that cancer didn't stop and isn't going to stop for COVID-19 or anything else. And so neither can we, and or could we. And so we knew uh, we had to put plans into place to uh, remain open, and uh, but at the same time, keep as many patients as we could at home, uh, care for them at home, uh, keep them out of the hospital, care for them in the outpatient setting as much as we could. Uh, and work with our partners uh, in inpatient services to, uh, to keep patients safe uh, and in the context of COVID-19. So we, uh, believe it or not, uh, shifted almost three quarters of our uh, employees to remote working um, and in a very short time. And that included a lot of our clinicians we uh, instituted uh, through the use of technology like this, um, the uh, telehealth services so that doctors and nurse practitioners uh, could, and social workers and, and others could interact with uh, their patients uh, through the use of technology from their homes and, uh, and then coordinated well with those who are on site at uh, Dana-Farber, uh, how to manage the in-person treatments that um, obviously needed to continue. Things like infusion therapy, radiation therapy, et cetera. So um, at that, all, all around that, the purpose of moving people remotely was to reduce the risk of transmission of the virus within our uh, walls and uh, only having people on site who needed to be there for our patients and their families. As you probably know, uh, we had to make the very painful uh, decision of limiting visitors uh, on our campus during this time. Again, for the purpose of keeping our patients safe. Um, we, we did some retraining of all of our parking attendants and they have become escorts to our patients uh, as they arrive, as their families drop them off, and we'll bring them uh, to their appointments wherever they are in our buildings. We instituted uh, screening processes that are still in place. Every patient before their appointment is called uh, to be screened for any possible symptoms of the virus. Uh, and then um, again, once they come in uh, it, to be seen, again, another screening we um, and, and a placing of a mask on every patient and every employee. If a patient's symptomatic and still of the virus, has symptoms of the virus, we have to evaluate that, of course. So they come in, we give them, we put a mask on and escort them to a private room where we can do a further workup. 
Uh, the same, uh, we have a process similar to that in terms of screening for our employees as well. Every employee must complete a screening. It's electronic. Uh, it's an app that they uh, access every day and they must review any potential symptoms and be cleared for work before they can uh, enter any of our buildings. Again, all of this is focused on keeping our patients and our environment safe. Um, we have, if you were, if you've spent time at Dana Farber uh, before, and you and you came there now, what you would see is a slightly different place, uh, much less, uh, many fewer people, um, more uh, physical barriers in place to support the social distancing that is that we're all trying to maintain, even in our personal lives, um, plexiglass screens, things like that fewer uh, chairs in waiting areas, et cetera. Uh, you uh, would also see quite a few more uh, of our housekeeping staff are much more visible because they're out and about cleaning surfaces that people frequently touch, um, again, to reduce transmission, uh, a potential of any transmission. So, that, that has been our focus over the last several months. We have continued to provide care to those that needed it. We have um, helped support other patients at home who did not need to be on site. And um, now where we are is at a place of beginning to open up a little bit. Uh, the time has passed three months where things like screening mammograms and other uh, sort of follow-up, long-term follow-up types of care really need to be reinstituted. And again, um, we are doubling our efforts to bring back in a thoughtful way um, patients uh, and uh, to, the, to the Institute. We will maintain um, a certain amount of the telehealth uh, model of care that we develop because it's been incredibly successful. Um, the feedback we've gotten from patients is that it's uh, they they appreciate and really love that time with their doctor, their nurse practitioner, their nurse navigator, or nutritionist, whoever, social worker, whoever, where it's just the two of them. And even though it's on a, a screen, um, it's an intimate time, uninterrupted. And um, so they'll we'll have a certain amount of that that will continue because in order to um, continue to protect people and keep them safe, we must maintain the, the, the physical uh, distance that, um, that is required to uh, prevent any possibility of transmission. We um, will continue with all of this personal protective equipment. It's um, become sort of a way of life now. Everyone is in a mask, I almost feel, uh, like I'm missing something when I don't have my mask on. Uh, and the only time I don't have my mask on is when I'm alone in my office. Um, and that's the same for all of us. But, uh, you know, we're still the same uh, people and the same team and the same, we have the same caring and compassion for our patients that we've always had. Just uh, now you can't see our faces quite as, uh, as fully as before, and um, and it's the same with our patients too. And it's just it's just been such an incredible time. You know, um, we it, it was it was just incredibly challenging to mobilize everything to uh, get to a place where we could continue to provide our care. But I have to tell you, I've never been so proud to be. A, um, an employee of Dana-Farber to be uh, a part of an institution that is so committed and so laser focused on uh, the mission of uh, conquering and eliminating cancer and uh, all the fear that it engenders. And I, I just am really proud of all of our staff and our clinicians. Um, it's, it's just been uh, a heroic effort on their parts uh, to continue to keep our services going and our doors open for, for patients. Um, so uh, again, I can't thank you all enough for your commitment and your passion for all that we do. We couldn't do half of what we are able to do uh, for our patients and families without uh, 
the resources that come forward from things like the Jimmy Fund Walk. You know, there's so much of our care model that is high touch, high connection, very relationship based. And a lot of that doesn't get uh, reimbursed by uh, insurance companies. So, so the resources that come from an event like the walk are just vital to, to who we are. And um, so again, I, I, I'll stop and I'm happy to answer any questions, but uh, I just wanna thank you all again, both for being here this morning and for all that you do for our, our institution. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Anne. And I know you have to go back, so I, we, won't, we won't keep you. We know you have lots of meetings and lots of important things to do today. Um, I, the one quick question that I had just kind of thinking is, you know, we're all on this call and, and all these updates are obviously fabulous and it's great to hear what we're doing. Um, as an outsider, as somebody, not outsider, but somebody that's not there every day, somebody that's a supporter of Dana-Farber or The Walk, Jimmy Fine, is there anything that's urgent you know, right now that's saying like, hey, we're in a shortage of X or what can I do to help today? Um, I'm always gonna do the walk, but is there anything additionally I can do now that might, that really is, a, is an area of need, you know, today on June 5th? Yeah, sure. Um, thanks, Zach. Yeah, I, I would say um, two things come to my mind. One is uh, uh, donating blood in our, uh, Craft Blood Donor Center, uh, that is, um, has been actually three things. <laughs> but um, so the blood donation uh, can be done through our, our Craft Blood Donor Center. We always need blood products, but especially now. Uh, and, and in fact, um, uh, it's become really important. I know that uh, some of our, uh, some people we know have called us uh, who have been, who have actually had COVID-19 and there are studies going on at Dana-Farber now where you can give blood uh, to um, participate in helping us learn and understand more about the, uh, about the virus. So um, I would say that's one, that is one area. The other is, um, uh, it, it, it's funny, um, but the expressions of appreciation to our frontline staff have uh, been just incredibly important and have had a, a tremendous impact. So we have, a lot of people have written uh, on our web pages and uh, you know, just brief little uh, expressions of uh, either your experience or your appreciation for our frontline uh, nurses, doctors, housekeepers, uh, cafeteria personnel, all those who have been on the front line every day. So if you have a moment and want to do something like that, that's immensely appreciated. Of course, your walking is uh, also very appreciated. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ann. Um, thanks for joining us. And, you know, it's, I think it's a really um, important it's a really important thing to be able to, to hear from those of us, uh, those of you um, that are there every day and that are fighting the good fight um, along with the rest of our you know, clinical staff. So uh, we really appreciate you taking the time and uh, we will see you on October 4th. Well, we won't see you, but we will see pictures of you on October 4th. Hopefully. Yes. Thanks, Ann. Um, so I, I wanna quickly, just before I get into what Jimmy Fun Walk Your Way is gonna mean, um, reiterate what I said about technical glitches as I was listening to Anne, my internet connection got a little unstable for a minute. So I, uh, I give me a, a second if for some reason I break up for a, a minute, but we will uh, hope that the internet, uh, you know, hangs in for me here and at my house. So, um, you know, as, as Anne mentioned, we continue to, to adapt and make ongoing updates where appropriate and changes to things that we are typically have done year over year the same way. And, and the walk really is no different, right? So we've had the Jimmy Fun Walk for 31 years in Boston, along the Boston Marathon route. And then something like this happens and we have to really figure out how do we shift gears and, and do something um, that is, we're still gonna be proud of, that you all still be proud to be a part of, um, and, and that you'll be able to have some fun with and make this maybe a, a one year kind of 
bump in the road where we're able to do something a little different and turn that bump into something really, really positive. So um, as you know, we have, we have officially announced that we will be going um, to a virtual setting in 2020 with our Jimmy Fun Walk Your Way. Um, and we really wanted to, again, focus on those words, your way. And it's, it's something that we're not going to necessarily tell you exactly what you need to do on walk day. We want this to be something that you can experience in the way that you see most positive and best for you. Um, you know, ultimately, the decision for us to, to, to make this official announcement um, just came down to, as we've talked a little bit about um, in some emails in the past, is it's just the overall health and safety of not only you as walkers, um, but our larger Jimmy Fun Walk community. So many of you are caretakers for patients. Many of you are patients yourselves, and many of you work or live with people that may have um, Im immunocompromised, you know, due to either being a patient or just due to other factors that are risk factors for COVID-19. And we felt, you know, in this time, it just, we, we couldn't commit to giving you the best event that we that you deserve um, in in a live setting if we were even able to have one and we weren't sure that that was even going to happen and for us to be able to plan appropriately over the next few months we really had to make a decision uh, you know now versus waiting until August or September and then being forced into a decision and then not having any sort of plans around it or contingencies for all of you um, so so what now what does the Jimmy fun walk your way what does it look like and we explained some of those things um, in an email that you received earlier this week, um, but we'll talk a little bit about you know, a little more detail of what all of that means you know, over the next few minutes. Um, we are still certainly hashing out a lot of this. So we, we were comfortable enough to make an announcement, comfortable enough to start to give resources that we have available now, but please know that what you see today is not what you're going to see on October 4th. Um, it's something we've been working on for, we've been home now out of the office for 12 weeks. And I would say about eight of those weeks have been really focused on this is a real reality that we need to look at. Um, and so let's start planning. So in, in eight weeks, we've created a lot of things and we've, we've thought of a lot of things, um, but we've still got a lot of time left. And that's where you're going to see things start to roll out over the summer um, that are, are a lot more user-friendly, um, a lot more um, enabled, enhanced, kind of fun, things like this, um, but things that you can also do on your own time and not be kind of locked into a time that we're telling you to join us for something. So um, stay tuned. I'll talk a little bit about the techn technical stuff in a few minutes. I wanted to first start out by probably the, the biggest question that we've gotten so far, and that's regards to the fundraising commitment. Um, so as you saw in the email, our fundraising commitments for 2020 have been lowered to what our normal virtual fundraising levels are. So everyone is working, is, is walking as a virtual walker this year. Um, it would have been really negligent of us to expect folks to, to be committed to the larger in-person um, level. So those minimums this year commitments are $100 for adults and $25 for kids 12 and younger, okay? Each of those included are a $5 registration fee, um, so, and when you're out, if you're recruiting friends, family, anybody else from now on, those are the numbers that you can, you can give. And in our hope is certainly um, that we know how committed all of you are to Dana-Farber and the Jimmy Fund. And if you have the means and if you are able to continue to fundraise and fundraise at the levels that you have in prior years, we would, we would love and ask and implore you to try and do so. I think when you listen to the things that Ann had talked about in the current needs of the Institute, the need for funding is not decreased in, in COVID-19, but it has increased. And uh, we also recognize that people are in different, potentially in different financial situations now than they were in 12 weeks ago. And we obviously have great sympathy for all of you that may be in that position. And so we we felt that dropping to the 100 and to the 25 was a good compromise between the real need for funding, which has not gone away and will always be a staple of the Jimmy Fun Walk, and also a sign of the current economic and financial climate that we are in. So um, we will continue to work with all of you the way that we always have in helping you to raise that minimum and also to help you if you have, are so inclined to try to go above and beyond whether it be to our pay setter levels or just simply to do whatever you can above 
the $100 or $25 minimum. So um, again, do not hesitate to ever reach out to us for help with any of that. Getting into pay setter levels, um, that's a question that has also come up quite a bit. Those levels have also decreased. Um, so our star pay setter level, which is normally $1,500 um, in 2020 will be $1,000 and each level will continue to go up by $1,000 from there. So two star 2,000, three star 3,000 and so on. And our young pay setter level, which is normally $500, is been lowered down to 300. Again, the very same rationale, understanding where we are and understanding that many of you are pay setters year over year over year. And we wanted to do what we could to continue that tradition for all of you. We know how important it is for people all while recognizing it is still a level of elite fundraising in, in within the Jimmy Fun Walk. So um, we made those changes. And many of you are on uh, walk on teams and are part of what we call pace setter teams. Those levels again will replicate kind of what they were last year. So last year, star pace setter team was 15,000. This year it's 10,000. So it's really just adding, it's adding a zero, uh, so to speak, for each of those levels 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Um, you know, we understand how much pride there is in being a pace setter when, when you do hit that. And we don't want to lose that. We, we know it's a big part of what we do for the walk. Um, and we know it's not everybody can, can, can get there as well. And that's okay. We want you to raise whatever it is that you can raise. And we will be there to help you every step of the way. We anticipate these minimums going back to the normal setting in 2021 that's predicated on us anticipating that we will be back in Boston and having our event as normal in 2021 as well. So all of these things will still be very fluid, um, but we will continue, you know, we'll continue to monitor, monitor all of these things and make decisions, um, you know, as appropriate in the, in the coming, you know, months when it comes to, to 2021, we're really focusing of course on, on October 4th and 2020 and, and, and really hopeful that we will be back again, of course, in Boston in 2021. That is certainly our plan. Um, talking about what you receive, our swag, so to speak, um, <clears throat> you know, this is probably the thing that is, is caused us the most discussion, quite honestly, over the last eight weeks, um, in determining we've, you know, we've heard from many of you, um, and quite honestly, that say, Hey, you know, we, we don't need t-shirts. We don't need hats. We don't need bibs. We don't need medals, all of those things. Um, and while, we absolutely understand that and we sympathize with that. And we know that people uh, may not, may have walked for 10 years in a row and they don't need a 10th hat, right? Or, or something to that degree. We, we completely understand that. Um, on the other end, we know how much the swag brings pride to what you're doing with the walk, um, to brings people together in a community setting um, where, especially this year, when you're not all walking together on walk day, but you can share in, in that part of it. So we felt it was important to still implement um, a lot of the swag, um, a lot of the materials, a lot of the, the gear that you get for being a part of this walk. So we didn't, we're not changing too much with it, but we, we do have a little, a little bit of a shift. So first I wanna talk about t-shirts. Um, t-shirts are something that again, we, we have had a lot of people say, you know, hey, I don't, I don't want a t-shirt, I don't need a t-shirt. Um, so there's a couple of things, one, on the registration form this year, you can opt out of a t-shirt. So it's just a checkbox. You can check right on the form to say, I don't, I would not like a t-shirt this year. I don't need a t-shirt kind of thing. Um, if obviously many of you on this call are already registered, if you don't want the shirt and you haven't clicked that already, just simply send us an email and let us know. and We'll be happy to, to save the, the cost on that to, to not have to ship or to order for you. Um, but we do want, people that, that want to be, to want to have the shirt, we want to give them that opportunity. So we will be doing t-shirts. They'll look a little different this year. They're going to try to have a little more of a commemorative um, feel to them and inside of kind of the sign of the times that we're in right now where we're being at home and we're not able to, to walk together. Uh, so we're calling it kind of our 2020 commemorative shirt. Um, and we are offering it this year to the first 5,000 walkers that register. Okay. Um, one of the things that's very difficult in a budgetary cycle is to forecast exactly how much material you're going to need. And with this being a completely new event, quite honestly, or, or a completely new version of our event, quite honestly, we don't know what the, what the walker response rate is going to be. We don't know if we're going to have our normal 9,000 walkers, if we're going to have 
5,000 walkers or if we're going to have 15,000 walkers. It's completely different and there are varying reasons why we could have less, more, or the same. Um, so right now we're, we're saying it's the first 5,000 walkers, okay? Um, if we're sitting here on, you know, quite honestly, again, full disclosure and everything, if we're sitting here on August 1st and there are 7,000 people registered for the walk and they all want t-shirts, we're going to figure it out. Okay. So uh, we're not going to take things away from people that want them, but we do, we can't just go and order our normal quantities when we don't have any sense of, um, you know, true data to tell us exactly how many people we should expect. So there's, there's some wiggle room in there. Um, again, if you don't want the shirts, please just simply let us know. Um, bibs, this was something that we talked a little bit about. And quite honestly, this is, um, once we came to our decision, we're very confident in this. Um, every walker will get a bib. It's an important symbol of the walk. We know that walking, alone, not alone, but um, socially distant at home virtually, um, makes it a little different to you know, put that bib on and, you know, and, and be a part of the event that way. But we think that people will want that. We are, would encourage people to do that, to get the full experience. Um, and it also provides a really good memento um, to all of you for walking. Okay. And it becomes at a very, very minimal cost to us. Um, so we are doing bibs. Anybody that we, we will still, we're still figuring out the exact process to that, but anybody registered in any real lead time before the walk will get a bib mailed to them. Everybody that registers kind of late in the game, let's say the last few days, there will be some sort of virtual bib um, that will be sent to you that you can print at, at home. So we'll, we'll talk more about that as we get further into the weeks and months. Medals, another big question that we talked about. Um, turned out we were so on top of our game. Um, medals we typically order um, in January, February to get the best deal um, to, on, on budget. Um, those medals have already been ordered. They're already produced. They're already at our office. So obviously we're not gonna sit on them. Everybody that walks is going to get a medal. Um, the one downside to that is they're not going to be commemorative of the way of the kind of the world we're in. It's not going to say Jimmy Fun Walk your way. It's not going to say virtual. Um, it's going to be a 2020 Jimmy Fun Walk medal that um, looks and feels similar to the medals that we've had year over year. Um, hats. So for the first time that we, we're doing this, we're only going to be giving hats to first time walkers. Okay. And the reason is, is our hats don't change from year to year. So if you've walked in the past, you more than likely have a hat that you would then be getting a second identical hat. Um, and when we are trying to stay very budget conscious, we thought it would make more sense to have folks keep the hat that they already have. If you don't have a hat from last year or from two years ago or from any other year that you've walked and you want one, simply let us know. Okay. Um, and we will, we will make sure that, that we get that to you. And then the last thing that we're doing um, for all of you, you're all registered already, or if you are already, is we have a, a limited edition Jimmy Fund um, face covering. If you've heard the word buff, that's kind of the main brand name that does it, um, that you can kind of pull up over your nose and pull down as like a neck warmer. It can make it into a scrunchie or a hair, ba a hair bandana. Um, anyway, I didn't know the word buff until about six weeks ago. So, um, But we are... Um, going to be giving those to our first 2,000 walkers that register just as a thank you for doing it. Um, so all of you, if you're registered currently uh, that are on the line, um, will be getting that in a few weeks. It does take a few, uh, a little while to, to ship. Um, so that's your swag, okay? And um, I want to also talk a little bit about, touch on quickly, is technology and what, are, what do we have planned for the walk itself? Um, and for leading up to the walk. And we're in conversations right now with two or three different companies to have a new Jimmy Fun Walk app um, that is going to kind of be able to bring new digitally enhanced things to the walk um, and, and walkers throughout the summer. Um, exactly what that's gonna look like, we're, we're still, like I said, trying to finalize the vendor and then we'll work on the plan. Um, but things that we'll, we'll look to is any one of these will have a mileage and step counting capability to them. So you'll be able to log training walks from a step standpoint and a mileage standpoint. Of course, also any sort of virtual walk setting on walk day, we're going to want you all logged in and logging your miles so that you know when you've gotten to your 5K, your 10K, your half marathon, your marathon distance, right? And while many of you probably use apps like Map My Run or any of those other step counting mileage tracking apps, 
Um, we thought it would be really fun if everybody, as many as, as can, do, do that through our Jimmy Fun Walk technology, right? So that's going to be a part of it. Um, we've talked about trying to get um, notifications on when you do training walks to have uh, messages pop up for you from uh, motivationally and also just in terms of thanking folks for continuing to do what they do and um, messages from doctors, from patients, from um, the walk staff, and, and also to also include fundraising tips and tricks and podcast form type things. So really an all-inclusive um, uh, Jimmy Fun Walk at your in the palm of your hand through your through your smartphone or tablet. So um, we're really working hard at this. It's something that I think not only this year but in years to come is going to be a staple of all fundraising peer to peer type events. That's not going to just be a one year thing, and we're not looking at it as a one year thing, regardless of if we have an in person event in 2021 or not. Again, our hope is of course that we do. These virtual technologies are going to continue year over year. Um, so we want to make sure, just like all of us doing Zoom calls, you know, that is not going to go away when, you know, we're medically or, or community cleared to go head all back into the offices that we work at. These things are going to be here to stay. We need the same virtual technology for you all to be here to stay. Um, from a day of perspective, opening ceremonies, kind of things like you would see at the at, uh, Dana-Farber 5K start. Um, handprint ceremony with the heroes from Hyundai, the Hyundai Heroes, um, the Hyundai Hope on Wheels program. Um, a closing ceremony, we have usually have our DJ, you know, working some sort of thing like that in. Those are all also going to be a part of walk day. And we're in the process of doing that. For the most part, those will be live streamed on the computer, either through our Facebook page or through um, where you can just kind of click through directly from the homepage of the website. So stay tuned on those as we as we move forward. Um, we've gotten a lot of questions regarding changes that can be made um, to those folks that have already been registered, right? So one of the biggest questions that we've had is, hey, I, I, it's great that we're you know, having lowered fundraising minimums and that we're having a lowered registration fee. How does that affect me as a currently registered walker? Um, Certainly, the fundraising minimums or commitments, as we've, we, we refer to them as, those will change, okay? So if it was 300, it's 100. We're working on getting that changed on the website itself, but please know that the commitment, regardless of when you register, is $100 or $25. So even if your site says 330 or what have you for the minimum or the commitment on your site, it is 100, and, and that is inclusive of the registration fee. It's not 130, it's not 105, it's 100, okay? 25 for people, uh, children 12 and younger. With regards to the registration fee, what we've decided to do is if you've already registered and you paid the $30 registration fee, you will receive a discount code next year for a $5 registration fee, okay? So you will be able to have that registration fee for the 2021 walk. And additionally, the, the registration fee that you paid this year, while normally it goes it's, it's in addition to the $300 minimum, so those minimums are, are really kind of like $330 and, and what have you. It is also kind of now shifted into your fundraising minimum. That minimum is now $100 and not $130. So we felt like that was a way to kind of still feel as though your, your registration was going towards you know, the, your minimum this year, but then also you weren't missing out on that $5 registration fee. So that will be available for you next year. So anyone who has registered and paid more than $5, next year will receive a code for $5. And then the last thing, just quickly, is we typically have what we call a recruit and be rewarded program, um, where we encourage folks to obviously recruit and, and recruit their friends, their family, their colleagues, um, whoever. And we typically have certain, pro, uh, certain incentives and things like that for our, our um, biggest recruiters year in and year out. That program will, will remain intact this year. Um, and we will have more information on that in the coming weeks. We, we probably will have an email towards the end of June um, with our first promotion regarding Recruit and Be Rewarded. Always remember that these are all cumulative type things. So if you've recruited people and they put your name in on the registration form, you're gonna get credit for that as a recruited person, regardless of whether or not it's a part of an incentive or not. Um, so that, and then I would just briefly say to our hero program, and that's obviously something that's extremely important to all of us. It's why we do what we do, right? 
Um, the HERO program remains intact for 2020. It may look a little different. Um, we certainly don't have mile marker signs and a virtual walk where we can have our stories and our photos of our heroes that, you know, one of the traditions that many of you have is to tap that sign as you're walking by. Um, you know, we, we can't physically do that this year, of course, um, but we are looking at ways to be able to highlight the stories of our heroes, the stories of our patients. Um, and that's another reason through an app that we adopt or a, you know, day of event, live broadcast or live streaming event, um, our heroes will, of course, be um, front and center as a part of that. And it's, it's too big a part of what we do. It's too important to us as a, as a team, as a staff, as a community, including all of you walkers and donors. Um, so that will not be lost. Um, it may look a little different, um, but it will not be lost. So having said that, I know Jess is on the, the back end. I want to thank Jess and Sam um, Rose, part of our walk team for kind of doing all this back end technology. Um, my internet hung in there for my portion. We'll do the best we can for some Q and A. Um, again, I know as a part of the registration process, you were able to submit some questions. So we do have some of those, I believe. Um, and I'm going to ask Jess to kind of read them aloud to me and I will handle. And then I know there are some questions popping up at the bottom, <clears throat> but I'm also being a little cognizant of time. Um, we'll get to as many of those as we can. I, I apologize for going a little bit over. So Jess, what do we have for our first question? Yeah, so this is a question that we received last time and this time as well, and I think it's important to address is the fact of fundraising in this environment. It's a tough time to ask for donations and what suggestions or resources do we have? Yeah, it's a great question. It's probably, it's, I'd say it's the biggest question we've gotten so far. And, you know, as I talked about when we talked about the 300 to 100, we, we completely recognize that and we empathize and, and, you know, we know that not everybody is in the same situation um, and it's tough. And I think it would be a little negligent for us to just say, <coughs> excuse me, just say, well, go out and do your thing, go out and fundraise and do your best. And, you know, I think it's up to you. You have to be really cognizant of the situations that you're in and you have to understand who you're asking. You have to understand the position that they're in and they may not be in a similar position as yourself. So I think one thing is just to, to really think about that and to really think about the ask and who you're asking. We can help you through that in, in conversation as well. Um, but you know, your walker, your donors, far better than I individually know any of your donors to say, this is the, the method that's going to work for person X, person Y, what have you. Um, so really give it a lot of thought and it's okay to pause. It's okay to not ask them right now. You know, the, the walk is October 4th. You've got four or five months of, of this ahead of us still. It's okay to, to pace yourself and understand that times will hopefully be, be improved in the next few months. Also, I think it's important to know that, excuse me, I just need some water. It's important to know that in times of, of economic struggle, many times people still want to give to causes. They may backtrack on the number of causes that they give to. So if you know that, that the Jimmy Fund in Dana-Farber really, really means a lot to that person that you're asking, chances are that person still does want to give. And they may not be able to give at the level that they gave before but they want to feel a part of something bigger than themselves and they want to still give. So if somebody normally gives to five nonprofits a year, they may now only give to two or three this year. But if you know that the Jimmy fund and Dana Farber is one of those two or three, you really need to try as best you can. And again, this all depends on your comfort level as well um, to be okay to, to make that ask. And we can help walk you through potentially how to do that. So please talk to your walk staff contacts, and, and ask questions because we are here to help you every step of the way. We also have a new virtual fundraising toolkit that's available on the website. So I would encourage everybody to go to the site and download that. It's got new ideas on ways to raise money virtually um, and, it, and will help walk you through a lot of these things, a lot of these questions that you might have. Um, Zach, the next question we got was, I'm looking forward to walking this year, but I'm nervous it's going to be difficult to recruit teammates considering the event is virtual and we're not going into Boston. Um, how do you suggest I talk to someone who maybe isn't planning on registering? You know, I think that's, it's certainly something that we thought a lot about when it came to making this decision is, you know, well, if, if it's a virtual event and I'm not going to be in Boston, why do I even need to register? Why don't I just go out and, and do a walk and say I'm walking for the Jimmy Fun today? And it's a great question. Um, I think the ultimately it comes down to two things. One, 
is the only way to support the Jimmy Fund in a fundraising cap capacity, which is at the heart of what we're doing, right? We are a, a fundraising effort to help benefit the Jimmy Fund in Dana-Farber. And that's, that's the core of what we do. So if you wanna do that, the only way to do that is to register because that's how you have the access to the fundraising websites and the tools and all of those things. So we encourage it from that perspective. We also, it's important to us to have an idea as to how many people that we have on the route. Um, if you, the way that we work, we know a certain segment of people that walk one year are gonna walk, the next year are gonna walk the next year. So for us to adequately plan for future Jimmy Fun walks to make sure that it's, it's everything that you all are used to seeing, it really helps us to have any sort of idea as to how many people to expect the following year. So knowing how many people we officially have this year helps. It's not necessary, but it helps. Um, and you know, lastly, any sort of support that you need throughout between now and October 4th, we don't, if you're not registered, we don't know that you're there. We don't know to reach out to you. We don't know that you may be looking for support. We don't, we're not able to give you extra resources like town halls and things like that, that are plugged in for our database, for our Walker base. So I think there's a real benefit to just being a part of the community at large by officially registering for the event. So I think it's really important. Um, but again, we understand that it's, it's not as much of a requirement, right? Because you're, you're going to be home as opposed to, you know, coming into Boston. So we would implore again, the spirit of what this walk is as the main motivator to register officially for the walk, because it's, it's important, frankly. I know we're, we're a little over, but we received a decent amount of questions. So I might ask two or three more, Zach, and then we can include the rest in a follow-up email. One question was regarding what distance should I walk? Do you have any guidance for where we should complete our walks? Yeah, um, and you broke up a little bit there, but I think we were asking like where, any guidance on how my, my distance or what I should do to where I should do it. Is that right? Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, no, that's it, it's my computer. Um, look, it's completely up to you all. We have our four core routes, right? Marathon, half marathon, 10K, 5K. That's not changing. That's a part of you know the way we, we we're going to work our virtual experience on walk day. Um, it's it's what the Jimmy Fun Walk is. But this year, you certainly have more leeway, right? You can make whatever mileage works for you on that day. Make it your Jimmy Fun Walk. That's the spirit of your way. Um, if you want to go out and walk one mile, go out one walk walk one mile. If you want to go out and just walk a few uh, you down your street one time and back that's okay if you want to walk 10 miles 15 miles whatever it is that's okay um and then when you talk about where you walk again your way it, it's it's what's best for you we will do our best to help provide you with recommendations on potential walking trails that are in the greater boston area or that are you know even the, the larger new england area we know we have a large scope of that um but it, you all are typically, you know, you know your neighborhoods, you know trails near you, walking paths near you. Um, do what you think you can do safely. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is that we typically would have refueling stations along the route, 12 of them if you were a full marathoner. Um, and we're not going to have those, of course, set up in, you know, 100 different locations throughout uh, you know, greater Boston and New England. So you need to make sure that you're accounting for how you can get water re refueling, uh, you know, Gatorade ish type drink snacks, things like that, if you need them. So whether that means mapping out routes that uh, take you by a local convenience store or bring you back past your house or friends houses, things like that, that are going to allow you to do that. Um, you just want to keep that in mind. The one thing that um, I would say to this is you obviously need to make sure you're keeping local ordinances in mind. If that means that, you know, if you're in a densely populated area where you can't be within that socially distant six feet, you know, if the, if the, if the local governments are telling us that we still need to wear masks during that, we're going to ask you to do that as well. Um, you know, we, we want to make sure we're keeping all local and state uh, regulations uh, in, in place. Um, I think that, I mean, that's, that's really the biggest recommendation. And then I would say too, one thing to keep in mind is, you know, I know there's going to be a real desire to say, well, I'm still going to go walk the marathon route on that day. And I think it's really important that you all understand that we will not have support out there for anybody on that day. 
So we do really discourage you from doing that, okay? Um, streets are gonna be open. There's no gonna be no police details helping people get across the street. It's main roads into the city of Boston. I, I really highly, highly would discourage that. Um, so that it really, it, it is what meant to be done in your neighborhood and walking trails, even a treadmill, your, you, whatever you can do that is safe for you. One question we got, Zach, was, do I need to hold my walk on October 4th or can I do it on another day? Yeah, um, the simple answer to that is no, of course not. You can, one of the things that we have, um, the reason our virtual program in the past has been if you're not able to make it on walk day, right? So that doesn't change, of course. If you had a conflict on October 4th uh, prior to this, you probably still have a conflict on October 4th. So we want you to do this when you can. Now, <clears throat> one thing we did wrestle with was do we eliminate October 4th as walk day and make it, hey, walk any day in October or any day in September, whatever you, whatever you want to do. For us, it was really important that Jimmy Fun Walk Day still occurred and it was still Jimmy Fun Walk Day. The spirit of what we do every year, getting everybody together on that special day, we still want to do just in a different setting. So it was really, really important for us to have that on October 4th. Having said that, we would so much rather you participate on a day that's convenient for you than not participate at all. And, and I can't stress that enough. That is the most important thing is that you're there and you're doing something for us, regardless of what day it is. So encourage you to walk whenever it makes sense for you. Hoping, of course, that many of you or, or the large majority of you can do it on October 4th, because that's when we're going to have a lot of the content available. And the last question that we'll wrap up here, Zach, um, is regarding volunteering. And for those folks who have volunteered in the past and have made walk day possible, what are their options this year? Yeah. Um, so it's one of the things that really does hurt us and, and we feel this year is, you know, it's not even the walk. It's so many Jimmy Fun events that are being canceled across um, all platforms. And volunteers are such a big part of this. We, we say it every year. We have over a thousand volunteers. There's no way we could do the Jimmy Fun Walk without them. And so it's really hard to tell those volunteers, you know, this year we don't have an event. We don't have an event for you to, to, to give your all to. And we don't have an event for you to help us with. Um, so in, in that respect, it's, it is really, really sad. And we hope that we can, uh, of course, be back next year and, and give those opportunities back to all of our volunteers that have been here for so many years. Um, you know, I would say this, if, if you know a volunteer, if you are a volunteer um, and you want to try and walk this year and you want to say, hey, you know what, let me give it a shot and, uh, and, and try to raise $100 and go and be a part of the walk this year, uh, obviously we would encourage that and we would love for you to be a part of it. Um, there's also, we have a Jimmy Fun Walk, a, a Jimmy Fun Volunteer Interest Form that we can send out to anybody that's interested. Um, and we will continue to compile a list of folks that if there is any needs for Jimmy Fun Walk volunteers, either at the walk in a virtual setting or in any other events, and as we start to hopefully get back into the event world over the next you know, few months and, and into next year, uh, we would certainly keep you apprised of any, uh, any available opportunities. And we, we understand the value that the volunteers bring every year. We don't want to lose that. Um, but unfortunately, in a, in a virtual setting, there just simply is not the capacity for the large-scale volunteer uh, program that we we currently have so uh, encourage you to try and walk this year if not let us know and we'll pipe you in as soon as we can when any other volunteer opportunities arise all right Zach we're getting close on time so maybe if we want to wrap it up and we can address additional questions that we've received in the chat and prior to the the town hall in an email on Monday yes absolutely so similarly to what we did at the last town hall um, we will include, <clears throat> if you had a question that's in the Q&A that we didn't get to, we will include an answer to you um, or, or the, if, if it's <clears throat> something that it relates to the entire group, we'll send it out in the email. If it's an individual type question, we'll reach out to you individually and make sure that your question is answered. Um, you know, just to kind of wrap it up, uh, again, just cannot thank you all enough. This is a very, very trying year. Um, it's a very, very trying time in our, in our country. Um, and for you all to continue your commitment to Dana-Farber and the Jimmy Fund in this diverse community of folks that, that we have each year, um, it really is important to us. And so we can't thank you enough. We ask that you continue to be nimble and be flexible in working with us as we figure out the best way to create the Jimmy Fund Walk Your Way, um, the best 
we, we promise to you to put our all into giving the best experience that we can to reciprocate the promise that you give to us every year by registering and raising so much money for Dana-Farber. So we can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough for joining us today. Um, we will continue to do these town halls. Um, our plan is to do one a month um, and, you know, potentially as need arises, if we need to do another, uh, you know, one or two in the month of September leading up to walk day, we'll do that as well. Um, but so please keep your, uh, your eyes and ears open for, for future updates from us future updates on the walk your way um, and, and, and larger scale rollout in the next few weeks. So um, hope everybody has a great Friday. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Um, and any questions, do not ever hesitate to, to email us, either email your staff contact <laughs> or email our overall Jimmy Fun Walk mailbox, which is jimmyfunwalk at dfci.harvard.edu. Okay. So I think that's it. Wish you guys a great weekend. Thanks again. And we will talk to you soon. Have a great day.